Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at the difference between EMF as well as potential difference and I'm also going to touch on internal resistance. Let's get to the video. First, let's look at EMF. EMF and potential difference are both a type of voltage. That means they are energy per unit charge. The difference is energy per unit charge to move the charge from where to where. So in electromotive force, Electromotive force is the energy required, energy transferred to move one coulomb of charge in one complete circuit. That is to say, if I started at this point here, then the EMF, the electromotive force, would be the energy required to transfer one coulomb of charge, energy required in joules, to transfer one coulomb of charge from here all the way around the circuit back to exactly this point. This is the EMF, the electromotive force. Notice that the electromotive force has nothing to do with force. It is not a force at all. It is a type of voltage. And then for potential difference, potential difference is also energy per unit charge. Therefore, it is the energy transferred to move one coulomb of charge, but from one point to another specified point in the circuit. So for example, if I wanted to know the voltage across this bulb, then I would measure the potential difference from this point to this point. I'm only measuring the energy in joules required to transfer one coulomb of charge from here all the way to here. This is potential difference between any two points in the circuit. And so, in this setup, we can measure the EMF produced by a dry cell by placing the voltmeter at its terminals, the potential, the positive terminal and the negative terminal. Notice here that there is no component in between. So therefore, it is the same, it is as if we are putting the point, the measuring point all the way here. It is the same thing. And so, when we place the voltmeter in this way, in this manner, at the terminals, positive and negative terminals, and we have an open circuit, then the reading here is the EMF. Where else, if we have the exact same setup, where the points of measurement are at the terminals of the drive cell and the circuit is closed, then the reading here is actually the terminal potential difference. That is to say, the potential difference from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. From here all the way to here. This is not the EMF, but the terminal potential difference. And so, what is the formula for EMF. Now EMF once again is a voltage. It is the energy per unit charge and that is exactly the formula. EMF is represented by this epsilon equals to the energy transferred per unit charge. So this epsilon stands for the electromotive force and again it is a voltage. Therefore the units are volts. And then we have the energy transferred in joules. And of course, we have the charge. The amount of charge, this is in coulombs. This is the EMF. Then what about internal resistance? Internal resistance can be defined as the resistance that is caused by the electrolyte in the dry cell. So when we have a circuit with a dry cell, this circuit can be further divided into two smaller circuits. That is, the circuit from the positive terminal of the dry cell all the way to the negative terminal of the dry cell. This square represents the dry cell. So this point from the positive terminal all the way to the negative terminal, this is known as the external circuit. And then, the circuit within the dry cell itself, that is, from this negative terminal of the dry cell all the way to the positive terminal of the dry cell within the dry cell, this is the internal circuit. 
And so now we have two different circuits, the internal circuit and the external circuit. And the resistance in the internal circuit, that means the resistance due to the electrolyte inside the dry cell, that is known as the internal resistance. And we usually use small r to represent internal resistance. We use capital R for resistance in the external circuit. And so what is this E? Once again, this is the EMF. This will represent the EMF and the unit is in volts. And what is this V? What is this voltage here? This voltage is from this point to this point across the resistor. Therefore, this is the potential difference across the external resistance, which is also measured in volts. And then we have I, this is the current flowing through this circuit. I represents current and is in amperes. And then we have the small r once again, which is in the internal circuit, and therefore is the internal resistance in ohms. And then we have the external circuit resistance. This is known as the external resistance with unit ohms as well. And so what is the effect? of internal resistance. What does internal resistance cause? Because it is a form of resistance, you need energy to transfer charge across it. That means there will be a potential difference formed within the dry cell itself to move charge within the dry cell. And this will result in a voltage drop in the external circuit because some of the energy is used to transfer some of the energy is used to transfer charge from here all the way to here. And therefore, there is less energy left to carry charge from here back to here. And so this results in a voltage drop. And so if we go back to this setup earlier, if we maintain this setup and then you close the switch, you will notice that this reading will fall. The reading in the voltmeter will fall. The EMF will always be more than the terminal potential difference. And that is because of this voltage drop. And as long as, as long as charge moves through a resistance, there will always be, unfortunately, loss of energy as heat. As charge moves through, heat is generated and energy is lost. So these are the two effects of internal resistance. So as you can see, if we want to get as much as much energy as possible out of the dry cell, we would want to make the internal resistance as low as possible. And so now we can understand that the electromotive force, the EMF, is the sum of the potential difference across the terminals of the power source. That means from the positive to the negative terminal, terminal potential difference, as well as the voltage drop. So when we add these two together, that is the total energy, the energy to move the one coulomb of charge in one complete circuit. And so we can use this statement to write down the formula that the EMF is equals to the terminal potential difference. This is in reference to this diagram. So V represents the terminal potential difference once again. There is no component between this point and this point. So it is as if we are placing this here. And the same on this side as well. We are actually placing this here. So this is the measurement of the terminal potential difference. And so the EMF is the terminal potential difference plus the voltage drop. This is the terminal potential difference plus the voltage drop. Let's put it as VD for V drop. This is... V is equals to IR and therefore this terminal potential difference is the current times the external resistance plus this is the voltage drop which is happening in the internal circuit. Therefore, this is the current multiplied by the internal resistance. And so we get the formula. EMF is equals to capital I times external resistance plus capital I times internal resistance. The current flowing through both of them is the same because they are connected in series. And now we can further simplify this by factorizing current and you get I 
R plus R. This is the relationship between the EMF and the internal resistance. That's it for this one, guys. I hope you've learned. If you have, please help me hit the like button. Thank you very much for doing that. If you enjoy videos like this, do subscribe. See you guys in the next one.